let's talk 49ers. They're three and zero, and we, I mean, all of us were watching football this weekend and the Niners weren't playing and we were sort of taking stock, like who's on their level. And there's not a lot of teams that are on the Niners level. So let's step back. And even though it's early in the year, it isn't even October yet. They're three and zero. A lot of people on this team deserve serious praise. Let's get into it. You go first. Yeah. And I want to say, I have a lot of praise for the. I'm very impressed with how they're playing and um, with their record. I want to say, but it's only three games. So who knows? I don't know what's going to happen in 14 more games. This is our opinion today. Mm. I'll start with praise. I want to praise Kyle Shanahan. You and I yeah. often on our show are critical of him. Well, I think he's doing a beautiful coaching job. I do. Um, I, I think Wilkes, as a defensive coordinator, is really, really good. Now, you may have wanted to praise him, so I apologize. But I'm praising the, the two main coaches, Wilkes and Shanahan. And what I want to say about Shanahan, he seems very comfortable with Brock Purdy. It yes. feels like, I would think, a play caller. And Bill Walsh used to tell me this. He has certain ideas or, or images in his mind on how he wants to run a game through his quarterback. I have a feeling that Kyle always had to compromise with the quarterbacks he had on the Niners and including Jimmy Garoppolo. I um, agree. Real quick, I would say, say that for a second. I just want to say there real quick for a second because Jimmy didn't necessarily fit Kyle's offense. Jimmy had his own. He wanted to be more like New England's offense, and Jimmy made so much money more than Kyle that he probably felt he had leverage to ask for what he wanted. So keep going. Sure, but what I want to say is finally, <coughs> Kyle has a quarterback through which he can express himself. Um, Kyle. Yeah. Um, Brock Purdy seems to understand what he does. Now, there are certain limitations, and we can get into that later, but I'm praising Kyle for doing one hell of a job and getting off to a fast start for a change. Getting off to a fast start, embarrassing the Steelers who've won their last two games, um, making Sean McVay lose what is not beating him nine, nine straight in the regular season, and making that guy red in the face and sort of in denial after the game, saying it was a good loss. Now they just lost yeah. again, and then... They took care of business with the Giants. Yeah, like this is the best coaching. He's, he's at his best right now, if not the best he's ever been. It's still early. He has gone to a couple Super Bowls, but he is at his best. And to your point, it's he like you can see he's in love with this quarterback. He, he didn't seem like he was ever in love. It didn't seem like he was particularly friendly with Jimmy. They ask about his relationship with Jimmy and he'd be like, yeah, I can't get him on the phone. He would say that publicly. Uh, and I think he felt like, man, this guy, Jimmy, has a huge ego. He makes all this money. He doesn't talk to me in the off season. But now you got this little Brock Purdy who has roommates. You know what I mean? He's roommates with backup offensive linemen and stuff. Like, he may develop a big ego one day and get a lot of money. But right now, I'm sure it's just, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, whatever you want to do. And he can do the stuff Kyle wants. Can I tell you something about roommates? Steve Young always had roommates. I mean, he was a multi, multi-millionaire. And they generally were Jewish roommates. He lived one year with Harris Barton, and he went oh. uh, another, another year with John Frank. And he had roommates. I didn't Isn't know, that interesting? I knew, I knew Harris Barton was Jewish. I didn't know there was another Jew on the team. John Frank, he was a tight end. And he became a doctor. How many Jews are in Plast the NFL right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but John Frank became a, a plastic surgeon. How many famous Jewish athletes are there all time? Sandy Koufax. <laughs> Who knows? Who okay. knows? Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy deserves a praise. Oh. Brock Purdy deserves praise. I mean, we, we keep saying, I think with quarterbacks, at least on the Niners, since they had Steve Young and Joe Montana, you're always trying to talk about, what can't he do? What can't this guy do? Why, why isn't he great? Okay, well, we know what Brock Purdy can't do. He wears his limitations on his sleeve. But beyond that, the things he can do, He's really good at, and he does a lot of things really well. He's super confident. He's never lost a game that he played the whole thing. And uh, I keep thinking, I keep waiting for the league to figure him out, but it has, it's not happening. He makes it look easy. He does, and I would add one thing, Iggy. He is he's fearless. We we, we watched some tape of him that JT O'Sullivan showed, and if you don't see JT's show, you're really missing out. He's so good. So good. And so he good. showed how the they would blitz 
Brock, he would stand in the face of the blitz and he would complete passes with guys breathing on his face and, and never flinch. Wow. He's really, really brave. Absolutely. Hell of a quarterback. And you're like comparing, you're trying to rank him. Where does he rank in the league right now? I don't know. If you put him on the Rams, would they be better right now? Maybe. We were watching Stafford. We're going to talk about Stafford in a little bit. But for this team, he's perfect. He's perfect. perfect. He's, perfect. he's perfect. Now, it'd be nice if he could hit a couple of deep throws. You don't have to hit all of them. But maybe he will. It's only three games in. Right. He's, he, it's, it's a skill he has to learn. Yeah. So, Brock. Okay, you're up. Okay. Debo Samuel. Okay. I was very disappointed in him last year. I, I felt, well, he admits he didn't come in uh, in shape, right, Iggy? Mm -hmm. a and I don't think a professional athlete who makes a lot of money and is that important to a team should ever allow that to happen. Having said that, he rededicated himself. He looks great. And Iggy, mm -hmm. I, you rarely see an, a, a, a wide receiver who get who is that powerful and warlike after making the catch, the yak, the yards after the I mean, catch. Jerry Rice was the original yak king, right? But he didn't do it like that. No. He outran people. D Debo runs right. through people. I've never seen anything like it. And I'll tell you, one time I was sitting next to Tom Rathman. It was uh, the, the playoff game. I want to – it was – I forget. My, my memory isn't great. But I was sitting next to Tom Rathman in one game last year. Debo was playing. Anytime Debo got the ball and broke a tackle, Tom Rathman, one of the best Niners of all time in their – Hall of their museum hall of fame would go, Wow, look at him. He's like Hercules. Tom Rathman probably broke a lot of tackles in, in his day, was bigger than Debo, and he was just like bursting with pride about this guy. Well, Rathman. he's a phenomenon. And did he say he's like Hercules? He yes. He absolutely wow. used the word Hercules. This guy's like Hercules. So I just for, for I Debo to have that kind of admiration from someone like Tom Rathman is incredible to me. Yeah. 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 He so I, 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 I praise Debo for rededicating himself and for being the great player that he is. I mean, you could have an argument. Who's the most exciting player in the league? You would have to certainly include Patrick Mahomes. But in the top five, you'd have to put Debo Samuel as well. Absolutely. Um, real quick, guy in the chat, Alex Frankel. I saw what you. I, I saw. I saw your comment. I saw your super chat. I'm going to get to you. Don't worry. I see. I, we're we're not there yet, but I'm going to get to you, Alex. Thank you. I got another guy, Steve Wilkes. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think the concern, and you and I expressed it, was that when he came in, it would be a falling off from what the other two guys did. Falling off? I, it, <coughs> he's as good or maybe better. He might be better. Um, they were the number one defense last year, but remember last year, they would give up long passes. Do you remember that? Yeah. If you if you had a quarterback who could get, who could just throw the ball down the field, the Niners gave up a lot of long passes last year. Not this year. Anytime anyone tries to throw deep on the Niners, it's usually incomplete or intercepted. And that was one thing that Steve Wilkes mentioned when he came here. He's like, we we are way too good of a defense to be giving up these explosive plays down the field. Got to eliminate them. And yeah, I agree. And they're gone through three weeks. That that's huge. Iggy, you've met him. I never have. What's his demeanor like? Very serious. Uh, he's way different than Sala and D'Amico. Sala and D'Amico were in their 30s, early 40s, and they come in, and they're upbeat, and it's all energy and positivity. And um, D'Amico wouldn't really be specific in his answers, but he was... Steve Wilkes is, very, is like in his 50s. He walks in. He has, a, he has something prepared. He doesn't just be like, okay, I'm here. What do you want to know? He has a whole thing he says, which is what Mike Tomlin does too. Try to be generous. I know what you want to talk about. I'm not avoiding anything. Here's, here's what's on my mind. Um, he's very contemplative, uh, serious, doesn't smile much, but doesn't seem angry. He just seems like a very serious coach. Um, reminds me of Fangio a little bit because Fangio was like that. Fangio wasn't like jumping around. Nothing, nothing against Sal and D'Amico. They're great. But Fangio was in the booth. Fangio was very sober and serious. Wilkes is like that. I would make it from what an outsider. I knew Fangio. Fangio is a man of the people. The way I look at Wilkes, I look at him like a professor at Stanford. 
I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Right. I like that. I like that very yeah. much. Yeah. He's like a professor at Stanford. Yes. When he's up on that stage behind that podium, he looks like he's giving a symposium on something on defense. Right. Yes. Right. And, he's good. Uh, I like him a lot. I, I, with, with D'Amico and even sometimes with Sala, I felt like they were like trying to be positive and trying to get us to be positive. But this guy's not like that at all. He's dry. He's very dry. I like that. Fangio's that way. Okay. Christian mm. McCaffrey. I mean, talk about God. the most exciting players in the league. He'd have to be in the top five too. And let me say, uh, again, I've never met him. Um, I didn't follow him at Stanford, but I have watched him since he came to the 49ers. Iggy, it's rare to see a running back who sees that much. He has the widest screen vision of, of yep. just about anybody in the league. If, if there is a crack in the, just a little crack to get through, he does. He yeah. accelerates very fast. If, while he's running, you hit him. You, it's hard to get him down, but he doesn't run through people like Debo because he's not as big. That's my right. impression. Um, I, I honestly wish that um, Shanahan didn't use him as much. I mean, we watched a game yesterday where, uh, uh, well, whenever they, they were sharing, two backs were sharing. The Dolphins, whose uh, coach Mostert, came for the Niners. Yes. Yeah, Mostert and the other kid. A um, chain. A chain. I, I wish that. Kyle would balance it more because you don't want to lose this kid. And he's been hurt before. That's my only little uh, kvetch. But beyond that, I want to say, Iggy, there are certain players in my life that it was a pleasure to watch. Jerry Rice. Um, Russell Wilson when he was young. Sure. Yeah. CMC. Whenever he gets the ball, the sky's the limit. And he plays so hard. So I have to say, all props to him. Who's better, McCaffrey or Prime Frank Gore? You know, I don't want to um, compare because they're different kind of running backs. Okay. How about Which, this one? McCaffrey yeah. or Prime Roger Craig? Oh, boy. Because they're similar. Well, McC I Craig understand. was bigger. Yeah. Uh, um, and faster, I think. Ooh, okay. Uh, he was. He was a okay. hurdler. He had the beautiful running style. I would say I don't have enough data yet on Fair enough. CMC to put him ahead of Roger Craig. I would say okay. they're very close, but right now I'd, I'd keep Roger Craig ahead. Um, all apologies to CMC. Okay. Let me think of one more person. Brandon Ayuk. Oh, he missed the last game, but he's going to be back. He just had, it was a Thursday night game. If it was a Sunday game, he probably would have played. Um, first two games, he was un, unguardable. I mean, there's, it, there's not many corners who can cover Brandon Ayuk one-on-one. -on -one. His route running is excellent. Uh, he's improved. He's so tough. He goes over the middle. Unlike some wide receivers, he extends to catch passes with really, I mean, he's, Really, really good. He's not as fast as Tyreek Hill, but he's really good. I'm going to go over to the defense. Did that okay. guy Hargrave? Hargrave. Iggy. He's Hargrave. the real deal. And he's yep. what they needed. Yep. Hargrave. I agree. You like him, right? Love him. Anyone else we want to get to before we move on? They do about 15 minutes of praise. Um, I... There are other important players, but I don't want to single them out for praise at this time. Okay. And we're obviously leaving somebody out, Bosa. Yes. He needs to show a little more. He didn't have an off season. Uh, I assume he's going to become a superstar again soon, but not after three games. I'm not going to praise him. Yeah, one agree? sack, he wasn't blocked on that play. I agree. Yeah, one sack, yeah. he wasn't blocked on that play. Um, so he could. I mean, maybe next month we'll do that. Eric Armstead and Javon Kinlaw on the, uh, they could, but maybe next month. Uh, Fred Warner is always in the mix. George Kittle's in the mix, but not yet. I want to give a shout out to Kinlaw. Um, sure. Kinlaw, I felt, was playing for his career in the yes. offseason. And I wondered uh, if his 
health uh, was an issue. He's really come back. So mm -hmm. uh, and and he's powerful. So I want to give yeah. a shout out to Kinlaw. Shout out to Javon Kinlaw. <laughs>